What's going on, y'all? Let me holler at y'all. Tell y'all something that perhaps many y'all don't even want to hear, but I'm going to keep it 100. That's all I can really do. A lot of people have contested the word in Matthew chapter 5, verses 32. Because a lot of people want to justify their actions and perhaps attempt to interpret what Jesus said. Yet his word is a final decree. What he speaks about in relation to divorce. Now I know a lot of people don't want to hear it because a lot of y'all got married over and over and over. You divorced about five, ten husbands and you're still looking for another spouse. Before I commence in this, when you look at Matthew chapter 5 verses 32, clearly says, it has been said. Anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. That is in accordance to the law of Moses. But then Jesus says in verses 32, But I tell you, this is from the mouth of Jesus. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for marital unfaithfulness or infidelity, causes her to become an adulteress. And anyone who marries the divorced woman commits adultery. A lot of people in this generation, glory, they overlook certain parts in the word of God because they want to continue or persist in accommodating their waywardness. Hallelujah. And so they're in conflict with the word of God, especially when the word of God begins to address their personal lives. You see, the word of God was not designed to be liked. The word of God was written to be obeyed. Jesus said, I would rather you be doers of the word and not just hearers. A lot of people in this generation would simply want to hear. They want to hear about the blessings of God, but they don't want to hear about the expectations and the commandments of God. Jesus comes to impose a new law under the provisions of grace, and he is against divorce. Now listen to me. Many of you will argue and say, hey, my husband is abusive, my wife is abusive, and perhaps you have valid points, but I want to bring to your attention that many people that manifest signs of abuse, they manifest those signs before the wedding day. Listen to me, people of God. Anytime there is domestic abuse, my God, there was a sign indicating the true nature of this animal that you married before you walked down the aisle. They did not just start manifesting those signs when you got married. You simply chose to overlook the signs uh, and you continued in uh, the marriage. You continued in uh, the wedding arrangements knowing that this person uh, has proclivities to be angry, has a proclivity to be abusive. Uh, you knew that these people were violent, but then you thought in your mind uh, that it was your obligation to change them uh, and you proceeded. Seated, uh, knowing that eventually this thing would get worse. So you made the choice. You have to live with the consequences. Now, there are a lot of people as well that chose to live with people, their boyfriends and girlfriends outside of marriage. You live together like you were husband and wife, yet God did not recognize your marriage. Yet the government did not recognize your marriage. Then all of a sudden, you woke up and decided to walk down the aisle, not knowing that the foundations were destroyed because of the fornication that preceded the marriage. And now there is turbulence in your marriage. And you call it a quits. And all of a sudden, you move to the next marriage, and then the second marriage doesn't work. And then the third marriage and the fourth, statistically, those marriages don't work because you're breaching covenant. God did not enforce grace, hallelujah, so that we can continue in sin. In fact, grace comes to empower righteousness. That is why the Bible says, even if a man looks at a woman lustfully, he has already committed adultery, already slept with her spiritually. That is why a lot of people have spiritual husbands right now. Glory to God. You go to sleep and you're antagonized by demonic principalities that are raping you, that are having sex with you in your sleep because of what you have let intrude. And so the Bible is clear in saying that if a man marries a woman that has divorced, my God, hallelujah, outside of uh, sexual immorality. Listen to me. Sexual immorality is the only breaker for marriage. 
Once that happens, you have completely abolished, destroyed the covenant. And so if you've married a woman that simply left their husband because he wasn't making enough money, glory to God, or because they had an argument or, you know, this, this petty things, glory to God. Because a lot of times when uh, we're making vows, glory to God, before people, we don't really mean what we're decreeing in front of people, but God takes vows very seriously. God takes marriage very seriously. And a lot of people have overlooked certain things in Scripture because we want to continue in our sinful ways. We want to continue in our waywardness. We want to continue in our corruption. We don't want to hear what God is saying. We want to hear what people are saying. We want to hear what our minds are saying. We want to hear what our bodies are saying. But how many people are taking the time to listen to what God is saying? Because many will have to give an account on the day of judgment. We're not here to debate the word of God. God's word is final. What God decreed is final. God said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain. We are not going to challenge the word of God. You chose to make Carry the animal. No one told you to walk down the aisle with the animal. My God, you chose it for yourself. So who is liable? You are liable. So many people right now, you married people, but you're in adultery. You're committing sin. You're in adultery. You know, you may repent all you want, but now that you're with this person, you are committing adultery. Wake up, y'all. Listen to me, we're not here to explain what Jesus said. Jesus clearly spoke it. He didn't use a parable. He clearly spoke it. In fact, that word is so plain that no one needs to interpret what Jesus said. It is completely plain. Hallelujah. Don't try to explain what Jesus said. Hallelujah. My God, there are consequences for disobedience. God is not changing his word for nobody. Nobody is that special that God is going to change his word to accommodate that individual. We've got to change our ways in accordance to the word of God and the gospel will be preached to the nations. We've got to wake up. And this is a plea to the preachers. You've got to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, the true apostles, they were not afraid of offending people. They lived their lives offending people. Glory to God. We have a generation of preachers and prophets that want to be liked by everyone. But how many people are willing to speak the truth? And the truth is as it is in the word of God. We are going to live by the word, not by worldly views and what people are doing and what people think is right. We are going to go by what Jesus decreed because his word is final. And the promises of God are yea and amen. His word is the final decree. So before you get married, before you sign that divorce paper, you better be willing to live with the consequences of your actions. Because a lot of people are going downhill because they think that somehow God is going to overlook their indiscretions. A lot of people are misusing the word grace. <laughs> Glory to God. The Pharisees came to challenge Jesus with the law, telling Jesus that did not Moses uh, say that, you know, we are to hand out a certificate of divorce uh, and all this thing that they were saying. And Jesus again confronted them and said, this was the law of Moses. Uh, Glory, because you people were obstinate. You were stiff necked. You did not want to listen. But here I am in the New Testament. In the new covenant, and this is my decree. Anyone who marries a woman that has been divorced outside of sexual immorality. My God, that man and that woman are committing adultery. Wake up. This is Apostle Wise Preach. And I give God all the glory. If this minister to you, share this. I know some of y'all going to be mad, but it is what it is. The word is the word, whether you like it or not. His word will never change for you or for me or for anyone at that. Wake up. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. Wake up. 
Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost.